<laughs> All right. Before I get into the teaching, I wanted to talk to you for a minute. This is all kind of off the record. One of our uh, ministry team uh, ladies uh, is going through uh, a really dark uh, period of life right now. Really bad. And uh, uh, I talked to her today and, you know, I had to hold off fighting back tears two or three times talking to her. And uh, the reason, one of the reasons was because I had so many flashbacks when I was talking to her. I've had uh, so many of those situations uh, hit me over the last uh, 22 years that, you know, I can't even count them anymore. It's been, things have been so bad. And every human being, sooner or later, is going to run into what I've run into several times and what she's going through right now. There's dark periods of being a human. You know, uh, in traumatic injuries, uh, terminal illnesses, uh, people dying, different things. And uh, what I've learned through uh, all these things I've been through and what she's going through now, what I've learned is that uh, you have to, you have to have some form of absolute truth somewhere in your soul you can hold on to while everything goes to hell in a handbasket around you. Because when these black dark periods hit you, the devil uh, mobs you. And he attacks from every front when he sees you're hurt and you're weak. And uh, if you don't have some deep truth you can run to, you can be overrun and get mad at God and turn on him and then backslide and all kinds of bad things will happen to you. And uh, this is kind of how it works. You know, you get hit really hard and uh, you start to doubt. Uh, you get confused. You start asking why questions. As soon as the devil hear, hears you say why, now he knows he's got you running. Yeah. Then he, then he, the demons crank it up. And when you're in these dark periods, what I've learned is if you can have some little absolute truth that you know is true, no matter what happens, or no matter how it happens, you can make it through the darkest periods and come out eventually on top, even though now you're getting steamrolled. And it's like uh, so many times I've had to go to my little section in my soul. Everybody has, a, has to develop that little spot in there to save your life. And mine always was kind of Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not into your own understanding. <clears throat> in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he thank you has, you know. I had always ran back to Psalms 37, you know, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be envious of people who work in iniquity. For they shall soon fade like the green herbs, and they'll be cut down like the grass. Trust in the Lord and do good, and you will be fed. Delight yourself in the Lord. He will give you the desires of your heart. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. I always ran there all these years. I've gone through all this stuff. And the reason I did it was because <clears throat> I didn't want to backslide. And when everything's falling apart around you, the natural inclination is to ask why. Then the devil comes to you and hits you with all that word of faith crap you learned. And I had learned all that stuff years ago too. And I had to get delivered from that word of faith BS. 
and you're speaking the things and you're creating these mirrors, you're blabbing it out and everything keeps getting worse. Don't tell anybody on TV I said that. <laughs> we'll lose some yacht payments. But when everything's falling apart and it looks like it's not going to get any better, and that's what she's going through. And we've all been there. I've been there multiple times. You got to have some spot to run to that you know is absolutely true. There's no question about it in your spirit. You have to have it. If you don't, you're probably going to backslide. Because as soon as you start doubting and saying why, and you start questioning God, that's the tipping point when you slide. And it has happened trillions of times over the years. A Christian has gone through tough times. It made no sense. And everything fell apart and the more you prayed the worse it got it made no sense and you got start getting a little mad a little frustrated that's perfectly normal you're not mentally ill you're not crazy we all go through it but the devil takes advantage of it and then he gets you to start doubting well just speak to your mountain it'll just flop and, and then you go through your usual religious rigmarole and nothing gets any better in fact things are getting worse See? you say well I can't relate to this you will someday you will someday uh -huh. the day is gonna come and you're gonna go I don't believe this is happening it's gonna be so bad you're gonna be stunned it's stunned bad like jaw-dropping bad Trust in the Lord With all your heart and do not lean To your own understanding. And that's how the devil gets you He gets you to start analyzing it figuring it out. What should I have done differently? What could I have done differently? Why did they do this? Why did they do that? How come they didn't do that? How come these people didn't? How come that didn't happen? Why didn't God fix this? Why didn't he fix that? And suddenly you're, the devil drags you into a maze. And suddenly instead of walking around like a human being, you're in a fun house with nothing but mirrors around. And you're looking over here and your guts hanging out to there and you look over there and your head's exploding. Nothing makes sense. Okay. All right then. Go to Bible study. I went through that phone call today and I thought I would share that. I don't know why, but I hope it helped. Somebody. Somewhere. All right. Let's get going. Now, the radio programs are on every day, as you know, on 10, 10 a.m. And uh, I was praying today with a friend of mine over at the other radio station that I left. He got in a car accident today, and he was in the hospital. Somebody ran into him. So uh, even if you work in the radio ministry, you're not immune from attacks from the devil. All the radio programs are on the website. You can get them on the Omni FM internet location. My Dark Sky Radio uh, it appears to have about peaked out. I had uh, 1,700 listeners last week, so it's kind of it looks like it's capping that right around there. So I'm going to stay with it because that's a pretty pretty decent number. All right, if you want to help us financially, you can go to Good Search and put in our ministry name and get off of Google. Same thing with Amazon. Put in SmileAmazon.com and put in our name, and they'll donate 1.2 percent of whatever you buy. You high rollers will be helping us out and paying the utility bill. Those of you who will buy a $5 book, thanks for the thought. Tonight's teaching is on our YouTube channel number two. All right. Welcome to our YouTube followers. We love you. Here's your uh, miracle list. I send these out 8, 10, 12 a week. One or two do it. That's pretty good. It worked. Don't forget about your terror cell at your church. 
the deliverance center is not a church and I'm not trying to get you to leave your church and come here that's not what we're doing here this is in addition to your church okay? when you come here and you learn spiritual warfare you then treat your church as a mission field then you go back to your church and start picking off people that need to be healed we're not competing with churches here that's why we're on Thursdays and Fridays instead of Wednesday nights and Sundays normally that's when most of the churches have their services. So I didn't want to get in a conflict with anybody. Other churches around town, several of them came in this week. Send us their dysfunctional people. The churches have some people that are nuts. Slang term. <laughs> and they, two people, two different people brought me a card. This guy gave me your name. Come on. So we're getting... Referrals from all over the valley. We're getting the hard cases, and that's what the Holy Ghost likes. He likes hard cases. That's that's when he really shines. All right, I'll see you at the Elks Performance Center in Prescott in a couple of weeks. I'll be up there Saturday, July 21st. And as you know, tomorrow is our uh, children's deliverance service, preteens only, starting at what time? 10 o'clock? Starting at 10 o'clock. Okay, bring your kids here. Seeing kids get delivered is actually heartwarming. I see we've got a lot of older people here that don't have kids anymore, but when you see children get delivered, that's really neat. Because we're saving them from a lifetime of agony. Imagine that. A nine-year-old kid gets delivered and... You saved them from two or three divorces. Wow, now that's amazing. Another kid gets delivered. You save them from child abuse, bipolar, schizophrenia. It's easier to get the demons out of the kids than it is the adults. Right? Thanks for your donations. We appreciate it. And we paid every bill last month on time, with the exception of one. And that's because I forgot to send the check in. Rick's not here, is he? Okay. That's good. All right, let's go. Cleansing the temple. You know, the Holy Ghost uh, set up the text uh, to help us. And one of his... Uh, Methods was setting up a pattern. He demonstrates things through patterns. And everybody's noticed that, haven't you? Everybody knows that. There's a pattern of victory he kind of sets up, or a process that he sets up. Illustrating for us how we can live victorious Christian lives. In America, most Christians do not live a victorious Christian life. There are only a small percentage of them that amount to a hill of beans spiritually. If you're going to become a disciple, you're going to be in the minority for sure. And you're going to have to break with the pack and do something with your life that nobody else is going to do. Now, hopefully, that's why you're coming here. All right, now check this out. Romans chapter 12. We all know this verse. I'm going to tie it into the pattern here in a minute. It says, Paul says, I'm begging you, my brethren, Christians, other Christians, by the mercies of God, you present your body, your body, a living sacrifice to God, holy and acceptable to God. Uh, Eurarestus means to be in fully agreement with what God likes. Okay, so he likes this. I like it. He likes that. I like it. He enjoys that. I enjoy it. He wants that, I, I want that. I agree with you. Yeah, it's the dream of every husband. <laughs> it's like that thing that never happens, but you always hope it will. The wife always agrees with everything you think and say. Wouldn't that be just... Stop. Ooh. Just had a fantasy there, and I did push it out of my mind. But this word means... When it comes to God, I agree with everything he likes. 
whether I understand it or not Whether I know about it or not doesn't matter. I Am acceptable or agreeable to God Whatever his opinion is doesn't matter. I trust him. I know his character I know what kind of person he is. So if he says that I go with that like a puppy Uh-huh my wife just got a dog Uh-huh and it, it's scary. <laughs> this puppy. I don't even know what kind of dog it is. This bonding that they went through is, is frightening. And I have become, and, it, and it's, it's, it doesn't bother me that much, expendable. This dog has replaced everywhere my wife goes, this dog follows her. I mean, it's like. Anything she wants to do with this dog, this dog is your arstus, agreeable to it. Doesn't matter. Want to sit? Want to play? Want to eat? Doesn't matter. Anything my wife does, this puppy follows. That's what God is calling us to do. Whatever father does Whether I understand it or not that puppy the IQ on that puppy. Let's be honest That dog's box of rocks dumb <laughs> The dog doesn't know it's dumb See and that's the funny thing about being a counselor for 37 years whenever you're counseling someone who's dumb They don't know they're dumb And you can't just come out and tell them you're dumb You have to gently Work into it. A lot of this stuff is social service type stuff I'm sharing. It's like compared to God, we're dumb. And that's true compared to the Holy Ghost. Everybody and everything is dumb. So, whatever he decides, you agree to it. Doesn't matter what it is. If he says do this, you just do it. The Holy Spirit touches you and says hey apologize Wait a minute. They were a hundred percent at fault. I was there doesn't matter you pull my You're the puppy and you're following that way. I apologize for Whatever you got to say Because it's what he told you to do even though you weren't at fault. I don't understand that doesn't matter You just agree with whatever he thinks And that's your reasonable that isn't even something unusual. That's just common spiritual sense Do not be conformed to this age I own this age and uh, This Greek words kind of interesting Sukematizo means to make a sketch of something like you would sketch a picture at a fair, right? And in this particular case, this word is modified by this word, metamorpho, meaning to morph or transform from one condition to another, kind of like a caterpillar to a butterfly. And by the anachinesis, renovation of your mind. Okay? My wife is a retired. School teacher and a realtor now And she likes to watch realtor shows I'm gaspingly bored <laughs> But what they do is you buy this rotten home and These this couple or whoever's on the reality show they go in they spend all kinds of money renovating this property and Then they show pictures of it uh, When they're done here was the kitchen, and there it was, and it's awful. Here it is. Unbelievable. It's like it's not even the same home. Yeah. That's exactly what God's, the Holy Ghost, is trying to do to you through the Word of God, is completely renovate your mind, because your mind, in your condition, is of no use to God. The carnal mind is at enmity against God. 
ekthros is the Greek word. It means it's hostile to God. Bang! Hey, calm down, dude. Shut up! The mind of a human being doesn't work with God. Your mind sucks. <laughs> no offense. So it has to be completely renovated. Well, what these TV people do, they go in there. It's amazing. They got the place. They got everything out. The walls, every, it's amazing. I mean, these people are highly skilled. I couldn't care less, but it is amazing to watch the end of the show. During the show, I can't stand. But I will take a minute and watch. Oh, that's interesting. Here's what it looked like. Here's what it is now. Wow, this is gorgeous. Look at these rooms. Amazing. Oh, we took this wall out. We put in a new bay window. Oh, God, you can see the pool. Now you can see. It's incredible. These people are highly skilled. Really talented people. The Holy Ghost is even more talented. What he's trying to do is gut your mind of its carnality and renovate it or transform it or morph it into the mind of Christ. So that you think like God. Because if you keep thinking like yourself, the rest of your life is going to suck as bad as the previous part of your life. You're never going to fulfill your destiny. And many of you have a call from God on your life. You will never fulfill that call until you go through this caterpillar to the monarch butterfly process where they gut the kitchen and the bathroom and renovate this gorgeous property. A renovation job. Yeah. This really is reality TV. We are really going through this. Why are we doing all that? Why are you sketching yourself in the mind of Christ? Why are you morphing your mind and renovating it? Why are you doing all these things? So that you may, Dr. Mazzo, test and find out what God's acceptable and perfect will is for you, which is what you really want, even though you don't act like it. Deep inside your soul, you really do want to serve the Lord. Amen. You do. Yeah. I've interviewed so many kooks, you can't even count. I'm so far ahead of you in interviewing kooks, you wouldn't even believe it. I've known this 37 years. Every person that comes into my office, even the coke, deep down, deep, they do want God. They do. They may not look like it, they don't act like it, they don't talk about it. But if you dig down in there, there's something in every human being. There really is something in there that is hoping. Wishing, wanting. God, I want, I want. God. Nakamazo means to test. Why is there a test? Why would God need a test? He doesn't. The devil tests you. He puts different scenarios in front of you and he, he pretends that's God. See? But you if you haven't renovated your mind. You won't know the difference between what the devil shoves in your face and what's God's will for your life. You won't be able to test it. You won't be able to test it based on God's word. You won't be able to test it based on the symptoms. You won't understand what's happening to you. You won't get it. Because your mind never morphed into the mind of Christ. Paul said, we have the mind of Christ. Well, Paul did, but he ain't sitting in my office. <laughs> yeah, that's a process there. Paul had already gone through that process and renovated his mind. He now had the mind of Christ before he was a serial killer. I don't think you heard me. 
He went from a serial killer to the greatest Christian that ever lived That is a total morphing renovation His mind morphed into the mind of Christ. It was un unbelievable one of the biggest miracles ever That's what he's telling us to do So when a bunch of false doctrines came to the church Paul would write him a letter Timothy Corinthians, whatever. Hey, I'm doc I'm testing it That's not passing the test that's a fake Jesus. That's another spirit. That's a false doctrine. That's a teaching of demons. Because his mind had been renovated. The Corinthians, their minds were not renovated and they didn't catch it. That's how false doctrines seep into the church. That's how spirits enter the church and cause splits and all kinds of other problems. This is it. That's a sketch. Okay? That girl there, somebody with highly artistic skills, sketched her picture there. But that's not what you're looking for as a Christian. This is the sketch you're looking for. You want to be sketched or become like him. That's what Paul's saying. Be a transformed. You must be renovated. This is your goal Not this one. That's a beautiful girl. That's a great painting a sketch beautiful artist That's not going to cut it in the spirit world This has to happen You must transform into The Sun Romans 12 3 I say through the grace given to me to every man among you Now he goes on to explain what might block you from doing this Huh? What what could block you from renovating your mind and transforming your mind and sketching yourself to be like Jesus? What could block that? Let me think for a second. Oh, oh, yeah, you people. Not a lot of bright people over here, but over here. Oh, <laughs> killing it. Yes, sir. So Paul jumps right in. So he doesn't lose his teaching. He's gonna he's gonna stop it before it starts. That's brother Paul brilliant. He says Hooper Faneo, what does that mean? People that are self-absorbed, self-centered, narcissistic, narcissistic personality disorder, people that think about themselves too much. That will destroy you. From renewing your mind and being sketched into the likeness of the Sun You will lose everything It's all about me isn't it. Oh God It is to the devil Not to the Holy Ghost Don't do that he says you know think of yourself what? Sophra nail this is an interesting word. It's the same Greek word used in Mark chapter 5 for the maniac of Gadara The guy that was living in the tombs Remember that story at the end of the story The end of the story it said the townspeople came out to see this guy and they found him sitting there clothed and in his That's the same word he was sane Reverse the scripture and you can go a little deeper with it Self-absorbed people are insane No Paul's not on the night train <laughs> Being self-absorbed will lead you to narcissism vanity pride backsliding Losing your anointing Getting caught in a scandal All the TV preachers that get caught in scandals All had pride 
They all saw themselves the way others told them they were. You're a great preacher, God. You're a man of God. You got a fabulous anointing. Oh, you're killing it. That's all satanic. The demons move through the congregation. They tell them, start telling him good things. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear that. The devil will tell you good things to keep you from transforming your mind into the mind of Christ. Hebrews 1, Jesus emptied himself and became obedient to the sufferings of death. He lowered himself. Now he sits at the highest spot. If you lower yourself, the Holy Ghost will come running to you and bring you to the highest spot. If you're focused on yourself all the time, that's spiritual in Sanity. Chapter 6, 1 Corinthians. Do you not know that your bodies are melos, body parts of Christ? A foot is a melos, a hand, a finger, a body part. Would you take a body part, in this case it's talking about your genitals, but he's using it as an illustration. Would you take that body part and make that part of a harlot? That's the Greek word porne. It means a promiscuous woman. Pornos is a promis promiscuous male. God forbid, Paul says. What do you not know that when you are joined to a promiscuous woman or a promiscuous male, you are now one body with that person? Well, how does the devil spread demons really quickly? How does he like it? Open marriages or swinger clubs are fantastic for him. Because the demons just quickly transfer from one person to the other during intercourse. You go from this one to have sex with that one and this one. If you've had a string of guys and a string of gals, you've picked up a rack of spirits. They just transfer in. Then it says, he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. This body of mine, which is the temple of the, my temple, is getting old. And it doesn't look that good anymore. That's right. When I, uh, you know, you get in your 60s and stuff starts dro drooping, things are hanging, and... I, you know, you got to go to bed. You got to take your clothes off. Well, what I do is I go in the room. I shut the light off. I take, take my shirt off, my pants, and then I keep the light off. I make sure the dog's not around. Go to the bathroom, lights off in the bathroom. Come out the door, I peek out, no dog, no wife. Sneak into the bed. Shut the door. It's nice when you're young because then you're, hi, how you doing? But, uh, oh, this aging thing, take my word for it, it kind of sucks. No offense. Your body is not where your Holy Ghost generator is. It's in your spirit, man. So you can look like garbage and be a spiritual powerhouse for God. Because you are joined one spirit, you and the Holy Ghost. So Paul says, listen, you got to take care of your body, and the most dangerous thing you can do with your body is what? Sexual activity. Why is it the most dangerous thing? Well, you can pick up transverse. Listen to this. Every sin a man or woman does is ectos outside the body, but he that commits fornication or pornea, which is any form of sexual sin, sins ice into his own body. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? He is in your spirit, man, in your body, which is in you, 
which you have of God Now that have word there is different Greek word in this faith in this text echo means to grip something or have it uh, Not just to have it in your pocket like keys, but to have it like a hammer like you you're grasping it with force and motivation You are not your own anymore That would be the opposite of what a self-absorbed person Someone who knows they're not their own anymore has gone through the renovation process in their mind You are now father's property Why are you his property? Well, he says it right here. Hey, you were bought off the slavery block. You were being auctioned off to die in sin. So, therefore, Paul says the conclusion is for a person who's renovated their mind, you don't treat your body a certain way. You don't treat your spirit man in a certain way. Hey, they don't belong to you. They're gods. Spiritual common sense. Here's the problem. Now we'll get to the mind Bible study. That was a warm up. Why are there so many screwed up Christians? Why are there so many Christians who can't get delivered and healed, etc., etc.? Because transformation takes guts All right. All right. and yeah. most Christians don't have it they're too self-absorbed they're too weak they're too cowardly they're too stupid there is no way to transform your mind without a fight it can't be done casually John chapter 2 Jesus had just been to Cana and he went to a wedding and he turned a bunch of pots into wine remember that story yeah everybody was happy he saved the day well then it says he went down to Capernaum that was his new headquarters he was living there and uh, Cana is at a higher elevation than Capernaum because Capernaum's on the uh, sea on the side of the sea there so he goes down to Capernaum and his mother goes with him his brothers go with him and his disciples went with him I thought that was interesting we don't even know who the disciples are now because this is the beginning of his ministry it says the first miracle he ever did was the wine in Cana he leaves Cana this is the beginning of his ministry he goes down to Capernaum my guess is He's setting up his new home and his family went with him to see him off. I'm guessing. I don't know why the family would go with him. Well, they continued there a few days. So then it says the Jews' Passover was at hand. So then Jesus leaves Capernaum and goes up to Jerusalem, which is at a, obviously at a higher elevation. Now notice something funny here. What the heck is the Jews' Passover and why would... God refer to it as the Jews Passover Well once you let a bunch of man-made doctrines Seep into the Word of God it no longer becomes the Word of God a little leaven Leavens the whole lump as soon as you start putting a few negative thoughts in your mind a few prejudice thoughts a few a few self-deprecating thoughts as soon as you pump a few thoughts in there uh oh it starts to contaminate the rest of your mind. Well, the Jews had rotted out Judaism. And it wasn't even the Lord's Passover, which is what it was called in the beginning. You remember that? It's right here. It later became the Jews' Passover. 
which is telling us what the system was rotten These guys here would have been great on Christian television <laughs> Making a fortune but rotting out people's souls The church and Christianity did exactly the same thing the book of Acts you had the original church the original gospel and That's how it was supposed to be handled. That's how you were supposed to do it the pattern of behavior was illustrated and then suddenly something happened. Uh oh Churches Took over church denominations took over Catholics took over Protestants then took and suddenly You've got a rotted out system that doesn't work anymore Christianity in America is a rotted feces driven system that has allowed the devil to take over the entire country. The whole country's rotten to the core. There's sin everywhere. There's churches on every corner. Telling you what? It's not the Lord's Passover anymore. It's the Jews' Passover. <laughs> Jesus makes his first trip to Jerusalem, right? Beginning of his ministry check this out John chapter 2 beginning of his ministry he walks into the temple and He looks over and he sees What looks like? Walmart They're selling stuff Temple They're marketing things It's the Passover it's like Memorial Day sales, Fourth of July sales, uh, Christmas, number one. Sales everywhere at Christmas. Everybody's competing for their market share. And at the Passover, the Jews' Passover, that's what the scribes and Pharisees were doing. They were using the temple and the Passover as a money-making opportunity. Check it out. And when he made a scourge of small... Cords. Scoinion is a cord that you make out of plants. It's not like the whips the Romans used on Jesus that were made out of leather and had metal in it and bone in it and so on that would rip the person up. These were were scores that you use on animals. You know, giddy up, so to speak. Jesus makes one of these cords. And does what well, it's not a prayer meeting <laughs> He takes this cord and he's whacking these people What you got to be kidding that's a felony here in America <laughs> He's hitting them and he's driving here's what it says he drove them out of the temple He didn't ask them to leave Here you see the crux of Sick Christians here it is. They know they're sick. They know they need deliverance. They know they need healing. They know they need a change. They know something needs to be. But they won't drive it out. They won't fight. They won't make sacrifices to accomplish it. What's the Holy Ghost illustrating here? Listen, this is your temple. There's no temple anymore. This is your temple. You're going to have to drive these things out. They're not going to go on their own. None of those animals, none of those people selling stuff are going to leave on their own. That's their business. You're messing around with somebody's business. He's overthrowing the tables. What's well, inappropriate to do at a seminar? He's pouring out the money. Well, that's a sacrilege. You don't screw around with somebody's money if you've got half a brain. You do if you're desperate for God. And the reason Christians can't amount to anything is because they won't drive the crap out of their temple. They learn to adjust to it. Well, I've gotten this out, but ooh, I'm tired. Maybe I can just and then they they 
have defense mechanisms and they have modifications and then they make up excuses and then they point fingers at somebody and allow this crap to stay in the temple. Well, Jesus would have none of it to start out his ministry. He cleanses the temple. What an interesting metaphor. That was the beginning of his ministry. Notice that? And was this a casual thing? No, this was violence, but he wasn't permanently hurting anybody. The, 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 the whip made out of plants was only to get the animal to move its lazy fanny. It wasn't to damage the ox. Jesus was not damaging them, but he was disciplining them. There's a difference. Discipline that damages is child abuse. That's right. Discipline is a blessing to a child. Yes. Yes. Child abuse is a scourge to a child. He's whipping them with these cords that don't cause any permanent damage. Boy, they sting. Ow, Jesus. God, that hurts. Yeah. The way we could get a revival in America, we'd ask Trump to pass a law <laughs> to line up every person that goes to church on a certain date. And by law, they have to be there, right? Millions of them. And then Trump hires a bunch of quippers. <laughs> And millions of church people are standing there like that and they, they just come up behind him and said and then on the count of three everybody drop your drawers <laughs> and the people stand back there. God didn't do that Trump's not gonna do it he doesn't know anything about what I'm talking about but the Holy Ghost does and he allows certain things to come into your life that are unpleasant Trying to motivate you to cleanse your temple <clears throat> and unpleasant things keep happening. Until you change. Well, he drives all these crooks out of the temple here in John chapter 2 and he said to them take these things out This is my father's house He says here 60 times in the Gospels, Jesus uses that term, my father, which indicates to me they had a, they were bonding even more than my wife has bonded with that puppy at the house. It's amazing. Don't make my house an emporium. What is that? A Walmart. Have you ever been to Walmart? I shop there all the time, but I only buy the top of notch stuff. <laughs> but at Christmas time, if you've ever been to certain Walmarts, oh, you don't know. You don't know what you're missing. Uh, for example, the one at 19th Avenue in Bethany during Christmas, uh, I dare you to go in there. I'm telling you the place looks like somebody set off a pipe bomb <laughs> That is Greek Emporium, it's a place where they sold a bunch of stuff okay? It's not a spiritual event You're just shopping now, I realize that's a spiritual event for some people. That's a demonic spiritual event. That's a shopping addiction. That's another subject. Yeah. You made my father's house a target. And then he quotes Psalm 69. And his disciples remembered that it was written, the zeal of my house. And now we get to American Christianity and see why it's so weak and why it's so dead. No zeal to renovate 
the mind into the mind of Christ People who will not voluntarily renovate their mind have to be encouraged to do it By the Holy Ghost how does he do it take a whip to you? Nope. He doesn't take a whip to you. He uses unpleasant circumstances in your life to get your attention to motivate you to change period of homelessness uh, a foreclosure a divorce uh, whatever it is there's a whole laundry list of things he will not cause but allow to happen to get you to see your destiny because it's been fogged over a bunch of people were downtown Phoenix a couple of months ago and they were pitching a fit down there and the cops came in they took these containers out of there somewhere and they put and these things started emitting fog and I mean it was thick and supposedly it doesn't feel that good either what are those things called what there they huh? smoke grenades okay when I was a kid back in the 60s and 50s they used to have what they called a smoke bomb you ever heard of that they don't I don't think they sell them anymore, but man, I tell you what, when you let one of those off and you never did it around yourself, you always did it around somebody you didn't like. Those things had a lot of smoke to it and they stunk. Yeah, yeah, you smoked them out all right. Both ends. <laughs> well, in Christianity, the cares of this life, worries, fears, anxieties are like smoke bombs. And the Christian no longer sees their call from God. They don't see their destiny anymore. All they see is this crap right in front of their face. So the Spirit of the God, instead of using a whip like Jesus used, uses unpleasant circumstances to motivate you to move out of your fog into a moment of, as alcoholics say, clarity. That's what you need is a moment of clarity. But you can't get any clarity while you're in the middle of a fog. Right, right. So everybody downtown Phoenix, they started running. As soon as they saw those things coming in, they everybody bolted. Why? They don't want to be in a fog. God, wouldn't it be great if Christians were like the people downtown rioting? That'd be so great. I don't want to be in a fog. Oh, what a divine inspiration. wouldn't believe the number of people that come to my office for help and I say no this is what needs to happen and maybe this needs to be changed and the Bible says this or that and instead of going yes thank you go it's oh shit oh shit oh shit oh god oh jeez god almighty why? There's no zeal there to change. There's no. My God, I'm, I can get out of the fog. I see it. Jesus had the zeal. At his father's house had become an economic whorehouse. He took those whips and he drove them out. Yeah, he whacked that ox in the you know what it's like to whack an ox in a fin? They don't like it. They're stubborn. They make weird noises. And all kinds of weird stuff. Sometimes they poop. He didn't care. He smacked that thing. He smacked that one. What are you talking about? Jesus? What's wrong with Jesus? That's a sin, isn't it? That's a blessing. Discipleship, discipline, is a blessing from God. 
You say, well, you wouldn't believe what happened during that last divorce. I would believe it. I do marriage counseling. I, I know the horror stories. I've heard a thousand of them. But what you don't believe and what you don't understand is that could have been the best thing that ever happened to you. Yeah. Getting rid of that demon-affected person down the road, when you look back on it, right. you're cheering with joy. Yes. Don't name any names. <laughs> Then answered the Jews, not God's people. Notice it's the Jews. What miracle do you show us, Simeon, that you're doing these things? What authority do you have to do these things? And Jesus says what? He focuses on your body. He says, destroy this. There's, there's temples right there. See them? God, godly temples right here. There's one. Then said the Jews, what are you talking about? What are you, nuts? It took 46 years to build this temple. Now, that's an interesting statement, isn't it? 46. I took a diversion from the Bible study here. In Antiquities, in the book 15, Josephus says some interesting things. I put these temples up here just for fun. If you're not interested, you can tune out just for a second. But here's the temples and the dates, right? So we had Solomon's temple over a thousand years BC. Then we had Zerubbabel who rebuilt that temple after the Babylonian captivity, remember? And it took seven and a half years for Solomon to build the temple. The reason for that is he had so many workers. Zerubbabel had a bunch of volunteers. Solomon had, you know, top-notch union <laughs> per personnel. It took only seven years to build that temple, but it took him 20 years to build it. Then, according to Josephus, Herod the Great started rebuilding the temple 20 B.C. So if that statement is right, and I'm not saying it is, if that's right, 46 years would have started from 20 B.C. So if you, if you look at the text, the Bible does say Jesus was somewhere around 30 when he started his public ministry, thereabouts. It doesn't say the exact age, but I mean, it could have been 29, 31, whatever. Who cares? But it was right in that neighborhood. And if it was 46 years in building, that means the temple had to have been finished in Jesus' lifetime. Before he went into the ministry. Now, this is just my own amusement. I just did this for me. The Bible also says the Jews rebuild the temple during the tribulation. The Antichrist takes over the temple during the tribulation. Remember? And it says during the millennium when Jesus comes back, he rebuilds the final temple for eternity in Jerusalem. In the new Jerusalem, the temple is rebuilt for eternity. That was my own thing. Check this out. This is really interesting. At the end of his ministry, Jesus has to cleanse the temple again. What's that telling us? Oh. You wouldn't believe how many people come here and get these tremendous breakthroughs. The devil attacks them right after that and says, you are feeling great. You're doing great. That was fantastic. You kicked our butts. You're good. The person never knowing that some of the spirits had gone dormant and they were hiding in there. Waiting for a chance to manifest later. The word of faith crackpots do deliverance like this. They're all kooks. In the name of Jesus, come out, go! Oh, he's gone. He's out. But wait a minute, I I, I can still see pterodactyls in my head. No, you're just they're gone. They're gone. They're out of there. You're healed. You're fine. In the name of Jesus be healed. No. Hey, don't don't make a bad confession, Chester. 
Okay, that word of faith crap doesn't work and that's not in the Bible You got to take the scriptures out of context to come up with a word of faith crap What's Jesus telling here? There may be a need for more than one cleansing of your temple Because for obvious reasons some people sin more than other people Brother Mike that's deep <laughs> yeah, listen, your grandmother, your great grandmother, you know, said damn or hell a few times and got mad a couple times when grandpa flatulated. And that was a sin, and she shouldn't have done it. And everybody agrees that's wrong. She needs to be saved. But you slept with 50 guys. There's a little difference between you and grandma. You got involved in New Age witchcraft. You're different than grandma or great grandma. So that means you have different demons than grandma did. Correct? So therefore, one person may need a few cleansing, one person may need a few more, another person may need a few more, more, more. What Jesus is telling you here, it doesn't matter how many you need, just get it done. Because if you don't get it done, don't manifest later at a weak spot. And you'll go, oh my God, there I go again. I thought I was delivered. The devil's less laughing his guts up at you. Why? Because you're spiritually ignorant. Not after tonight. Here's a second cleansing. You mean Jesus had to do something twice? He had to do a lot of things more than once. Check this out. Mark 11, this was after his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. They came to Jerusalem. Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out those who sold and bought in the temple. He overthrew the temples of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. Now, for some reason, notice there wasn't any livestock in this one. Look. As you go through your process of renewing your mind and deliverance, you're slowly getting better. So the first time you went through it, yeah, you had a bunch of yaks in there, a bunch of cows, a bunch of sheep, and a bunch more crap. Well, as you go through the process, those aren't there anymore. These things are there. Doves, uh, false doctrines. Fake teachings, pride, uh, some bitterness. Maybe the witchcraft stuff's gone, but the negativity toward your mother and dad are still. So as you go through your process of renovating your mind, as you morph into the mind of Christ, you gradually whittle off like a fisherman on the bank. You whittle it down. Jesus went to the temple a second time to cleanse it out, and he noticed it wasn't as bad as the first time. Then Jesus did what? Wow! What a revelation. He said, you're not going to be allowed to bring any more crap back into the temple. Wait a minute. You mean after I go through renovation, I have to guard my mind? Ah, uh, yes. Beep. Brother Mike getting it? He said, hey, now that I threw this stuff out, don't bring this crap back in. It is not written, my house shall be called a house of all nations, a house of prayer. You made it a den of thieves. Demons come to steal, kill, and destroy. Their, they come to steal the most important thing of all, truth out of your mind. That's what they want the most. They want to steal truth from you. And then they always replace it with something false. Your mind is like a den of thieves. Chron chronically going negative. Chronically seeing the glass half empty. Chronically. 
demonic negativity, a den of thieves, stealing your faith, implanting doubts, stealing your hopes, implanting fears. Well, does it mean, you know, mean I'm extra bad? Absolutely not. Everybody goes through it. It's the transformation process. We all do it. Everybody goes through it. I like to died years ago. I was reading a book on Smith Wigglesworth. He woke up one morning. He'd been in the ministry for years. This guy had seen every miracle in the book. And the Holy Spirit spoke to him and told him I'm going to remove Smith Wigglesworth and every trace of him from you. That was after he'd been in the ministry for years. See miracle after miracle after miracle. He said, Every morning I get up, there's a whole bunch of stuff I got to clear out of my mind. It's perfectly normal to go through this process. You are not a sick person, you're not a weirdo, you're not a nut. You're a normal child of God. It's a process of transformation. It doesn't happen overnight. So what you've got to do is be patient with yourself. God's not done with you yet. Patience is the key. The Holy Ghost has got racks of it. The scribes and the chief priests heard me. What? Of course they wanted to kill him. Why? When somebody takes your money from you, they've hit you in your sweet spot. Money, the love of it, is the root of all evil. They hated him for it. They were using the Sabbath and God's laws, which were pure, to rake in money like TV preachers, they had whored themselves out. When you start taking money from whores, they'll call their pimp and you're going to go down. Uh -huh. the, uh -huh. the, the, the Jews called their pimp, the Romans, and they butchered him. Why? You're messing with your money. Don't mess with somebody's money. You'll get killed. They feared him because all the people, and Aklas is a mob or a crowd. Jesus drew huge crowds wherever he went. And the Jews and the scribes and the Pharisees, they were boring. And they were jealous of him. Because a bigger crowd, as a TV preacher will tell you, is more units of revenue. The potential of financial gain with a larger crowd statistically is better than a smaller crowd. I know what you're thinking right now. I can't compete with Brother Mike. This guy, this guy is, this guy's got it. No, this is how preachers think. I'm not even making this up. I make up a lot of stuff, but I'm not making this up. The more human beings that are sitting in that seat, see this seat right here? There's nobody in it. The potential for revenue out of that seat is zero. Math major. Yeah. yeah. I see the envy on your hearts. Poor people. There's no revenue there. There's potential revenue here. See? So the TV preachers want a bigger crowd. So what do you got to do? You got to hill song this thing. Bang! Entertainment coming out of your ears. Wow! This is amazing! And it works. They wouldn't do it if it didn't work. They take in millions.
when the evening, evening came he went all day like that can you imagine and that was a tough day I've had some tough days here you've had tough days I had a tough day yesterday here well wow, it was unbelievable I didn't get home till 10 quarter of 11 it's so one tough case after the other when I left uh, Kelly was sitting in a corner somewhere drooling she had had a tough day. <laughs> She was wiped out and I was too tired to even go comfort her. I had I staggered out to the truck Jesus I can't even envision the days he had knowing what the stuff I go through He's casting out the temple in the morning. He's whipping thieves At the first service he's teaching them all day at the second service then he's healing and praying for the sick and casting out Demons in the evening, and then it says he took off. What's God telling you? Do the same. You can't work 24-7 for God, and he doesn't expect you to do it. You're a human being. Jesus was a human being. You have to get rest. The reason is because when you get tired, as Vince Lombardi said, fatigue makes cowards of us all. The devil takes advantage of you when you're tired. That's when he brings the mob in two kids come at once while you're exhausted Two ex-husbands call at once when you <laughs> Matthew 21 Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all those who bought and sold in the temple. This is the second version of this Second cleansing at the ends of his ministry. It's in Mark and Matthew check this out he overthrew the tables and the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but you made it a the thieves. Then it says, after he cleansed the temple, he did ministry. Oh, I know, I know it's sinking in right now. You see the pattern here. The Holy Spirit setting up this pattern cleansing first cleansing first Get the crap out first Renovate and transform your mind first then do ministry not in America We do it the opposite see as soon as somebody gets saved and they've got their first love and they're on fire for God we go wow somebody's on fire for God that's the only person in the whole church so we got to use them while it lasts so this person gets right into ministry the devil sees him coming and he's holding his guts laughing he sees this rookie coming in who doesn't have the training the discipleship the Word of God not nothing but he's got love and enthusiasm see the devil loves people with love and enthusiasm with no brains <laughs> They're easy pickings for him. Easy pickings. They end up backsliding in two months. And the devil explains to the person that just got saved, and he's got his first love. He's all enthused. The demons explain to him, those people at your church, there's something wrong with them. Not you. Uh, you're great. And there it goes. As soon as people start telling you you're great, you can hear something in the background. You know what it is? A fuse. Psst. What's at the end of a fuse? You go through cleansing first before you go into the ministry, not Bible college or seminary. Hello? When the chief priest and scribe saw that, all the wonderful things he did. And the children crying in the temple, Hosanna, son of David, they were, oh, don't you see it? If you cleanse yourself, you will be in the minority of Christians because most Christians won't do it. It's too hard, requires too much work. They don't have any zeal. They got no guts. They're too lazy. They want to drive through experience. They don't want to cook a meal. They want to drive through and kill her. If you decide to cleanse yourself separate yourself to use another term sanctification you separate yourself or sanctify yourself to God 
If you do that, you will be in the minority. Okay? Then after that, you go into the ministry. Your ministry will be legitimate then because you've already cleansed yourself here. You've already renewed your mind. And guess what happens next? You get attacked. If you decide to do the right thing, you will draw the wrong people. I shouldn't share this, but I, she's not here anymore. Vivian used to be here. Remember her? And we did everything to, we could to help Vivian because I saw she had a bright future ahead of her. I took her to my office one day and I said, hey, listen, Viv. You're a beautiful woman. you got an effervescent, outgoing personality. You're intelligent. You got enthusiasm. You got all these assets for God. And she loves God. And she wants to serve him. And she's excited. Everything I just mentioned to you kind of puts her in a minority. I said, once you get out in your ministry, you need to be careful because. The devil is going to send you a man to help you. And that person that they send you, it's all positive. They don't come in play their cards hey, You need to lose some weight Woman you don't play that one till later When they first come in it's flattery You're beautiful She is beautiful it's flattery it's puffing you up I said, if you ever get involved with any kind of a man at all, he has to come see me first. <laughs> That'll do it. Yeah, that's the guy with the expert. There they are. That'll save her. Listen, if you do the right thing and you cleanse yourself first and then go into the ministry, which is the opposite of Christianity in America, you will draw in persecution. You will draw in people who don't like you, which is telling you you're doing the right thing. <clears throat> Here's what it looks like. Paul was three days without sight, and he did not eat or drink. You remember the story? Everybody does. He got born again on the Damascus Road. He gets blown out of the chariot. He goes into the fisherman's wharf. He says, hey, go in there and sit there, and you'll be told what to do. Why did he tell him that? Because Paul always told everybody else what to do. Paul was the boss. Paul was self-absorbed. Paul had a huge IQ. People that have huge IQs are major problems in Christianity. They think too much. They feel too little. Paul had to be broken. I can't prove this, but these three days, this is my own personal opinion, it may not be right. That's when he got delivered from demons. That's when he got rid of his sin. That's when he got his alcoholic moment of clarity. That's when Paul went through his cleansing of his temple right here. Notice what happens to him after he goes through his cleansing. Ananias comes in. He says, Brother Saul, hey, I know what happened to you when you got saved on the Damascus Road. I came here so you might receive your sight, healing, and then be filled with the Spirit. You have no idea how many Christians who have not gone through the cleansing process first can't get healed and can't get filled with the Holy Ghost. Why? The cleansing process comes. The beginning of his ministry, the first thing Jesus did was cleanse the temple. 
the wine was not part of his public ministry. He did it in secret The wine thing wasn't even on his table his mother came to him Yeah, Jesus was kind of a mama's boy in a way like a lot of people are but the first thing he did was in his public ministry Cleansing That's what God wants you to do He wants you to finish your cleansing process So you can get healed and filled with the Holy Ghost and then what's going to happen to you? The scales fell from his eyes. Oh boy the symbolism there is fantastic What is renewing your mind <laughs> the scales fall off your mind. you see truth? Clearly that you never saw your entire life. Oh my God moment Paul saw it all clearly then suddenly all the Old Testament scriptures lined up Jesus Yahshua The scales fell off his eyes it was more than physical It was spiritual it was mental And then what did he do? He got baptized. Thank God. When he received meat, he was strengthened. The next thing, what is that? Hey, listen, God wants you to take care of yourself. If you don't take care of yourself, you're going to wear out faster and he can't use you better. He wants you to take care of yourself because in this life, we have these bodies. Mine looks fantastic because of the outfits. But underneath, it's Turn the light out in eternity. We have these gorgeous drop-dead bodies. I'm gonna I'm gonna look fantastic in eternity yeah. I'm gonna have some kind of security position in the New Jerusalem and have these you know, just fabulous I just made that up I have no idea what I'm doing, but I know the point is the point is If you don't cleanse yourself your ministry is always going to be sputtering and your life is going to be yo-yo Christianity Good for a while and then it tanks good for a couple days then it pops out And then what did he do after he was strengthened he was baptized filled with the Holy Ghost healed the scales fell off his eyes first Then what did he do? Then he went into his ministry don't you see the pattern of success here? Can't you see it? It's so clear First you get cleansed first you get the Holy Ghost first you change then The Holy Spirit uses you like a monster You become a cold-blooded killer to the devil you you become someone he fears Instead of someone he makes fun of ha Look at that biatch we're gonna kick her face in today <laughs> She'll take an offense and get pissed off at somebody Look at him. Oh, yeah, let's puff him up today. Hey, that's a nice suit brother. You're looking great. You ought to be a preacher on TV <laughs> See the devil fears people who have been through the cleansing process He does not fear those who skipped it and went to their Gifts first. Oh, you didn't hear it. See, you may have natural gifts from birth. You may look good. You may sound good. You may be able to sing. You may be smart. You may be this. You may be that. That's not good enough to minister in the spirit. The only people that truly minister in the spirit are those who have went through the cleansing process first. Amen. These people finished their deliverance, they didn't quit halfway. These people renewed their minds. They didn't quit two thirds of the way in. Everybody that heard it was amazed. What's this part for you? It's your testimony. Oh my goodness. People who have sunk into the bottom of the well of sin have the greatest testimonies you can ever imagine. But they never use them till they go through the cleansing process first. Their testimonies become shame. You didn't hear me. 
I know you didn't your testimony is an embarrassment to God Because once you give your testimony and you haven't gone through the cleansing and then you fall later people go ha Oh my god, this person was uh, Saved or they were in prison. They were sold to gypsies. They were eaten by lions. God saved them and then oh he's back on porn You're not listening your testimony becomes a farce if you do not go through the cleansing process first The devil wants you to share your testimony without going through the cleansing process because he's setting you up for a fall and embarrassment later He wants you to get the word out. Oh, man, I used to be this and that and I did this and that. Oh, that's great Oh, that's wonderful. Yay. Hallelujah. Oh boy. Let's speak in tongues Then the person falls later and they look back on that testimony the demons remind them they say remember when he was telling you about he killed a lion, then he ate a bear. Remember that? And look where he is now. Back on porn. Look, he's drunk now. Look at that. He's back. He's, oh, he's on crack now. <laughs> you don't understand. If you go through that cleansing process first, as as Rocky, uh, his coach, what was his name? What's that coach name of Rocky? Mickey. Remember Mickey? Yeah, Mickey. Mickey walks up to Rocky. He says, hey. Hey, you look like a stinking ape. Okay, Mickey. Mickey was a extremely, extremely delicate person with his conversations. Very gentle person. You look like an ape. Here, put this string on there. So now, now Rocky Marciano used that string. See, and if you can move and you can punch when and not break this string, see, you become a very dangerous poison. You go through the cleansing process the way the Bible tells you to do it and you develop your gifts and your anointing You become a very dangerous poison to the devil Amen. You skip that process and go in because you sing good and you look good you then become Katy Perry you then become Whitney Houston you started out in church, but you skipped the cleansing process and you went with your gifts And then you went to hell Katie Perry and Whitney Houston started out singing the gospel in church the devil was helping them Oh, you got a beautiful bo voice, baby. You are you're killing it. You're fantastic. Man, you sing like an angel. Oh, he he poured the flattery all over those two women. He took them. Why? They went to ignorant churches who didn't understand what I just taught you tonight. There's a cleansing process. You clean the temple out first. Then you enter the ministry. This is good preaching even if you don't like it <laughs> What happened to Saul oh he got bigger and stronger why he went through the cleansing process first And then what happened to him they tried to kill him What did that tell you he was on the right track? <laughs> As soon as the lukewarm, carnal, useless, gutless church people turn on you, that's a red flag. Your cleansing process is working. Because you're not like them anymore. They're religious Christians. You're taking it to a different level. You're not seeing yourself too highly as you ought to see. You see yourself soberly. Why does God like to use people who have been rotten stinking sinners or who have been gasping failures? Why does he like them so much? They're more likely to have a little compassion on you when you're struggling hello some pious religious person that They're useless Sometimes you just need somebody who knows what real life's about that doesn't have a certificate
Let's close in and see the process here. Do you notice a pattern here? I did. And if I noticed it, anybody can. He gets saved on the Damascus Road, but he is not ready for ministry. He's not ready for his destiny. Far from it. He has a dramatic conversion. You may have had a minor conversion. It doesn't matter. A conversion is a conversion. You say, well, I'm not like Paul. Well, now, yeah, I wasn't blown out of a carriage either. That's not the point. The point was, after you get saved, no matter what's a big deal or a little deal, you go through your cleansing process. Three days, three nights. No food, no drink. A Paul fast. That's a tough fast. But he was a tough person. And he was an evil person. He would drag Christians out of their homes and beat them and murder them. He was a serial killer. Serial what? What was he after? Hookers and whores? No. Christians. He was a miniature Nero. He was a Christian killer. He had to go through a terrible cleansing process, a traumatic one. Well, that's fine. Whatever, whatever is required has to be done. But then he got healed. And he got restored. He got baptized in water. Notice the pattern here. He got filled with the Holy Ghost. He got fellowship with other Christians. He started in his ministry and then a wonderful ministry. You want to fulfill your destiny and answer your call from God? You just saw the pattern. You start out finishing your cleansing process, not going halfway or two-thirds. Well, I forgave uh, those people, but this person... No. Every single one of them, no matter what they did. No exceptions. Well, I've already got the, this demon and that. Uh, okay, fine. No. There's a couple more that need to come out. All of them have to come out. Okay. Well, hey, man. I Well, Bob, you know, whoa, Bob's still stuck in there. Go back to the cleansing process and get Bob out of there. Okay, trust me, you don't want to take a Bob home. <laughs> Paul went through his cleansing process. The ex spouses were gone. The, the 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 killing and murdering was gone. The the hate was gone. If you don't go through your cleansing process, your ministry eventually will fail. If you don't believe me, ask a TV preacher who falls. They never finished the cleansing process. They carried over something, a lust, a greed, some anger. Something caught them later. Jimmy Swagger, Jim Baker, good people, good men, never finished their cleansing process. You want to die a spiritual nothing and a nobody? You do not. You wouldn't be coming here if you did. You want to fulfill your destiny and your call from God. And there is no way to do it if you do not finish your cleansing process. You say, Brother Mike, it's, look, I got all these gifts. Hey, nobody, nobody sang more gifted ever than Whitney Houston. No one could sing like her. Nobody. You know where she learned to sing? In choir, singing for the Lord at church. You know what a great singing voice will do for you in your ministry? Nothing. She died and went to hell. A drug addict. Why? The churches didn't tell her, Whitney, you've got these great gifts and you're a beautiful woman and you have all these assets and you've got a great personality and blah, 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 blah. But 
I just read about Paul's ministry and I noticed something there. There's a cleansing process you have to go through before you proceed any further, sweetheart. So what we're going to do is we're going to disciple you so you can completely change and renew your mind and sketch yourself, not into beautiful, gorgeous, pop-singing Whitney Houston. No, no, no. Into the sketch of Christ. The churches didn't do that for poor Whitney Houston. The demons took her. Let me tell you something. Singing isn't going to do you any good when the devil comes looking for you. You can sing like crazy, then you die. He don't care whether you sing. He helped you sing. I don't believe he said that. I'll explain it at the next seminar. He blesses people with gifts to set them up to get them to fall later. Katy Perry, same scenario. That woman's been taken by demons. Her life's going to end up pure hell. Because once the devil gives you a bunch of gifts and gives you fame and fortune and gives you money, he comes back later to get paid. I got news for you when he comes back looking for you. He's gonna have quite a surprise Because tonight you're gonna change immediately and you're gonna finish your cleansing process. Here's the good news. You've already started The devil's tried to get you to slow it down You're not gonna slow it down You're not gonna slow it down Let's pray. Father God, Lord Jesus, I noticed you cleansed the temple and you did it at the beginning of your ministry and then you did it at the end. That means we must do multiple cleansings. If you did, if you had to do things more than once, how much more would I? How much more would I, Lord? Of course I would have to. Of course. I would have to, Lord. There's many people here tonight who have started renewing their mind, but they haven't finished it. They've gotten bogged down with the cares of this life, pressures, trials, tribulation, heartaches, heartbreaks, sicknesses, negative relatives. They've all bombarded them. And they've slowed down. They haven't finished their cleansing process. But I know, Lord, I know, cleansing process is first it's first and tonight there's a few people here that we're going to pray for that are going to reboot their cleansing process and the stuff in their soul and the stuff in their mind that they still have They are going to remove and you're going to help them do it You're going to help them do it because we can't do it alone. I Don't have any skills Lord. I need help. I Can't do this thing on my own. Of course I can't I need the Holy Ghost to save me and help me and Since you bought and paid for that he is more than willing more than able to help us. Thank you, Jesus. All right, now if you started your cleansing process and you bogged down a little bit, just stand up where you're seated right now. Just stand up. You started it out and you started cleansing and then the devil started to throw logs in front of you. And you know how it works. You remember exactly what he did. You know what happened. He sent you somebody that you shouldn't even talk to. He sent you a quote friend you shouldn't have had anything to do with. He sent you doubts in your mind before you had renewed it. He he made you doubt. Maybe he did to you what he's done to me and what he did to this lady in our ministry. Maybe he sent you a catastrophe. 
that catastrophe stalled you and by standing up what you're telling the Lord right now is you know you have a call on your life you know you're not supposed to die a nothing and a nobody you know you're supposed to have an anointing you know it something in here you've already had somebody prophesy over you you've already had the Spirit of God speak to you you know there's something there you know it and that's why the devil tried so hard to steal it from you because he knows it too and you're gonna repent tonight you're gonna repent tonight aren't you Can my ministry team come on forward if you would real quick Let's pray then. Sally, Father God, I just read, saw this Bible study with Brother Mike and I looked at this scripture and I see it. It's clear. It's clear. Paul had to go through his cleansing process and he had to finish it. And Jesus had to cleanse the temple. That's the first thing he did in his ministry. And it was the, one of the last things he did in the ministry. He cleansed the temple out. And I've cleansed my temple out but I never finished it I never finished it Lord but my call is still in front of me I have still been called by God I've still been called to do something of real value with my life not with fame and fortune but something much better something in the spirit something with the Holy Ghost something great the Holy Spirit that's what I've been called to do father God I'm not going to end up like poor Whitney Houston it's not going to happen to me she never finished her cleansing process her gifts drew her into fame and fortune that's not going to happen to me right now that's not going to happen to me I'm going to finish my cleansing process right now now I'm going to ask you right now to forgive me now if you have something you have to repent of just speak it out right now in the name of Jesus just speak it out the Bible says you have to confess it if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins you have to confess it first you have to speak it out and confess it go ahead just do it Lord Jesus forgive me Lord forgive me dear Lord this is what I've done help me Lord I'm so sorry this got in my way that got in my way this person was sent to me by the devil I didn't see it I became friends with somebody I shouldn't even have spoken to it was a plant it was a setup I'm so sorry it was a relationship it was a man it was a woman something the devil sent me I am so sorry and I'm repenting of it right now in the name of Jesus I'm repenting of it right this second right now Lord I'm confessing it I'm confessing it right now I'm so sorry I'm so sorry I sinned I failed I took my eyes off of renewing my mind I didn't renew my mind I'm so sorry I never finished it I started it and it went well but then I stalled and I'm so sorry for what I've done I'm asking you to forgive me I'm asking you to forgive me father please forgive me just confess it just speak it out you have to speak it out and confess it the Bible says not because God wants to know about it. He already knows about it. He wants you to confess it. I believed lies. I believed untruths. I said things I shouldn't have said. I did things I shouldn't have done. I never finished my cleansing process, Lord. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I wasted months, years on bad relationships, lies, fake churches, false doctrines I got sucked in but today I'm repenting in the name of Jesus I'm repenting right now in the name of the Lord I'm repenting right now in Jesus holy name and I command in the name of Jesus these deceiving deceptive spirits that pulled me away from my call and stalled my cleansing process and kept me from finishing my repentance these spirits that kept me from renewing my mind. I command these evil spirits right now in the name of Jesus to be bound and to come out of me. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you, you thief, you liar, you thief. I want you out right now. You'll get out of my body right now in the name of Jesus. You'll get out of my mind. 
I'm finishing my deliverance now. I started it. You you got me to stall it. Now I'm rebooting it. I'm rebooting it. I forgave these people, but I didn't forgive those people. I'm rebooting it. I have to forgive them all. All the odd. All the unforgiveness has to come out. All the bad men have to come out of me. All the transfer spirits from adultery, from divorces, come out in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of fornication, I command you to come out of my body right now. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out right now in Jesus' name. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come on out. Come out right now. Get out of my mind. Come out of my mind. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Right now. Right now. Come out. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out. Come out of my head. Vanity, pride, arrogance. Come out. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Come out of there. Arrogance and pride. Come out in the name of the Lord. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Come out. Come out in the name of the Lord. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Come out. Come out. Come out. Cleansing process. Reboot. Come out. Right now. Come out of me. Come out of me right now. Go. Come out right now. Get out of my body. Come on, ladies. Every ugly man. Come out. Come out right now. Come out right now. Quickly. Come out quickly. Get out. Sin, wickedness, evil, lies, unbind your power. Come out right now. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Right now. Get out of my body. Come out right now. Get out of my mind. Lust, homosexuality, lesbianism. I command you in the name of Jesus. Lesbian spirit, come out of me. Gay spirit, come out of me right now. Come out in Jesus' name. Lust dreams, violence dreams, lust dreams. I command you to come out of me right now. Out. Come out right now. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Come out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Go now. Go. Come out now. Get out of right now. Come out now, every bad man, all of them, all the users. They saw me, I was beautiful, then they took advantage of me. Then they lied, then they cheated on me, but they left something in here. I command you right now, every, come on ladies, all those guys that you slept with, when you got rid of them, you thought they were gone, you were wrong, they were not gone. They left a spirit, a transfer spirit in your body. You got to get that spirit out of there. Come on, guys. You were in the military years ago. Remember that? And you went to a whore. You went to a whore when you were in the military. Remember that? Yeah, you picked up a spirit when you went to a prostitute. Then you brought it home to your wife. Then it transferred over. And the cleansing process is going to start now. You're going to finish it now. In the name of Jesus, come out of me. Come out of me. Come out of there, you spirit of whoredom. Right now. Rejection and low self-esteem. I command you. Come out. All the men. All the bad men. Every one of them. Come out of me right now. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Go in Jesus' holy name. Go now. Come out now. Come out now. In Jesus' mighty name. Wasting my life and missing my call. All the wasted years. Unbelievable. It stops tonight. All the wasted years. That did it. Every wasted year. Thus saith the Lord. I will restore unto you. The lost years. The locusts have eaten. The lost years. The palmer worms have eaten. Come out in Jesus mighty name. Come out of that body right now. Come out. Go in Jesus holy name. Get out of there. Come out in the name of the Lord. The lost years, the locusts ate. All these wasted years. I can't believe it. Get out now. Come out in Jesus' name. Get out of my body right now, you spirit of fear and intimidation. Go. 
Come out right now. Chronic distractions. Get out. Distracting me from my call, my ministry, my anointing. Come out. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Go now. Come out now. Go. Get out of there, you homosexual. Get out of there, you gay spirit. Come out right now, I said. Come out. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Go. Go. Procrastination. Go. Get out of there. Go. Compromising. Go. Out. Come out. Come out, you compromiser. Come out, you coward. You coward. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out. The cleansing process starts now. Now. All the bad men go. Get him out of there. Get him out. Get him out. Get him out of there. Come out of there. Come out. Go. Go. Come out. Get. Come out of that body right now. Get out of her. Every ugly man. Come out right now. Go. Come out of her stomach. Get out. New age. Generational witchcraft. Witches from the... There they come. Come out, you witch. Hurry up, you witch. Witches. Witches. Come out right now. Go. Come out right now. Go. You get out. Now. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, you spirit of adultery. Hey, come on, guys. You slept with all them women. You remember when you did that? You you took your life in your hands sleeping with that woman. That woman had demons. That woman had demons. You slept with her. They transferred into you. Get them out of there. Adultery, fornication, oral sex, anal sex, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Come out of my body. Come on, ladies. You met a, a boyfriend one time. Remember, he was kinky. He was kinky. Remember that? He taught you sexual things. It wasn't him. It was his demons. They taught you sexual things. They taught you anal sex. They taught you oral sex. Get that spirit out now. Come out. You were a swinger. You had an open relationship. You picked up spirits. Get them out now. The cleansing process starts now. Come on, fight back. The zeal of my house has eaten me up. Fight back now. What are you get, doing? I have to get my sister out of there. Good. Why? What she do to you? Well, I, I basically hated her since. Uh, Why? I always hated her since Why? I was born. Well, I just didn't like her. Why? And we always fought, and you know, we hurt each other. What's her name? Uh, her nickname. I call her Illy. 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 Now listen. I L L I. Illy, like Illy. It was chilly, then it got changed to Illy. Now listen. A uh, hundred years from tonight, let's say you're burning in hell. <laughs> And you're sitting there going, my God, I wouldn't forgive any, and I ended up here. Is any worth that? Repent of it. Father God, I repent of this horrible evil of having bad feelings about my sister. That's a horrible sin. I repent of it right now. Any, come out of me. Fighting, strife, bitterness, hatred of any, come out. Come out. Come out and repent of hating my sister. I repent of it. Get out of me. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. You went to a prostitute. You went to a whore. When you did, when you did, you picked up a spirit and you brought it home. Come on. You're on pornography. When you were looking at the screen, something entered you. Something entered you. Something entered you while you were on your cell phone. You had your cell phone. You pulled up hardcore. You saw the genitals. You saw the sex on the phone. And while you were watching it, while you were watching it, something transferred in. Something transferred in. 
Get him out. Spirit of lust. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Illy, Illy, come out of me. Right now. Come out. Come out. Get out of that body right now. Fight harder. Pray harder. Come on. Come on, sweetheart. Fight harder. Fight harder. Fight harder. Quickly, fight. Come out in Jesus' name. Fight. fight harder. Satan, I hate your guts. I can't believe you destroyed my family. Get out of my body. I hate your God. The zeal of my house has eaten me up. I will fight back. I will fight. I will not stand and do nothing anymore. Satan, I command you to go. Get out of my body right now. There he is. Come out. That's it. Fear. It's fear. There he is. It's a fear spirit. Come out. Take a breath of love. Spirit of fear. Come out. Come out of her stomach. Come out of her womb. Come out of her womb right now. Come out. No. Come out right now. Get out. Intimidation. Shyness. Fear. Cowardice. Go. Cowardice. Come out. Come out. Come out in Jesus. Come out in Jesus, buddy. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Get out of there. <laughs> Come out. Terror. Come out. Every ugly man that abused you leaves you tonight. Go. Come out. Get out. Come out. Get out. Come out. Satan, I bind your power. Come out of me. Get out. Come out. Fight back. Fight. Get out of my body right now. Fight back. Fight harder. Fight harder. You are going to stop this insanity tonight. Get out. Right now, every curse, I break you. Every curse, I break you off right now. Go. Every curse, come out. Every ugly man goes right now. My husband, his girlfriend, everything. What they're doing in bed. All the thoughts in my mind of what they're doing in bed. I command you to come out now. Out. Out. Come on, you must fight back. You must fight hard. Where is your zeal? Where is your zeal? You must do what Jesus did. Pick up that whip. Pick up the sword. Go after the devil tonight. Go after him. Satan, come out. Fight back now. You picked up prophetic demons. You went through a fire tunnel at church. You picked up spirits. Prophetic spirits, I command you in Jesus' name. Fire tunnel, prayer tunnel demons. Come out now. Get out of my body. Come out, I said. Come out. Get out of my body quicker. Come out faster. Right now. Get out. All the spirits from my ex-husband. Come out now. All the verbal abuse. All of it. All the verbal abuse. All the criticism. Constantly being criticized from my childhood till now. Go. Go. My Heavenly Father has never criticized me. Come out in Jesus' name. Every ugly man. All of them. All out now. There he is, right in the stomach. Come out. Come on out. Get out of her. Come out. Get out of her stomach. Go now. Go. Now. Go. Now. Come out. I let my husband go. I let him go now. Husband, go. Come out. Witchcraft. New Age. Sorcery. Native American witchcraft. Santeria. In the name of Jesus Christ. I bind your power. I bind your power. 
New Age. Come out. Come out. Get out of there right now and go, I said. Go now. Now pray for your sister. What's wrong with you, hon? This is Nancy. She hears the blasphemous thought day and night. She hears what? Blasphemous thought voices. No, that's not you. Do you speak English? Yes. That's not yours. Those are their thoughts. They're not your thoughts. And, that, and how'd they get in there? When she was 11, 12 years old. When she was 11, 12. At a 12 Egypt. Egypt. Egypt yeah. And how'd they get in? How? Uh, uh, somebody touch her or do something uh, to her? Yeah, she was uh, hated by brother and... Uh, brother hated her? Yeah. What's his name? Huh? What was his name? Uh, Nader. Nader. Is he Nader. still alive? Yeah. Okay. But, but he's in term, uh, he's mentally... Uh, yeah, he's the demon stuck him. Raise your hands. Close your eyes there. Now pray for Nader. Pray and ask God the blessing. Pray and ask God to forgive you for the bad feelings you had about him. It wasn't my brother. It was his demons that did it. His demons hated me. I blamed my brother. I blamed my brother and I was hurt and mad at him when I was young. And he transferred spirits into me. And I command my brother's demons out. I command my brother's demons to come out of me now. Go now. Take a breath. Come out, every spirit from Egypt, go. Come out, Egypt, leave her. Every spirit from Egypt, every demon from men who dominate women, men who put women down. Egypt, come out of the woman of God. Come out of her. Come on out, go. Come out, Egypt. Come out. Every spirit from every every man that ever touched her. Come out right now. Starting with her brother. Go. Out. Come out. Egypt, come out. Come out. Pharaoh, do you, there he is. Keep coughing. Come out. Yeah, that's it right there. Come out. Keep coughing. Go. Go now. Keep coughing. Go. Keep going. Come out. Come out. Go. Come out. Go. Come out. Keep coming. Come out of my throat. Egypt, come out. Get out. Go. Egypt, come out. Every man that tried to dominate me. Every man that tried to control me. All of them. All the other men, including my brother. I forgive them all. I release them all now. I release the entire country of Egypt. Go. My whole history, demons, false religions, generational curses. I release them now in Jesus' name. Go. Go. Come on. Come on. There it comes. Go. How's that love going? Remember that? The con going? That's not the answer I was hoping for. Where's that passionate love we talked about in my office? Love. Remember? Yeah. How's that going? Come out, I said. Come out of there. There he comes. Get out of there, you snake. You snake from Egypt. How's it going? Love. Love. That comes before the deliverance. Come out of there right now. Go. There it is. Come out. Egypt. Come out of her. Come out of her, Egypt. There it goes. There it goes. Come out of there. Come out. Egypt. Get out of there, you pervert. Blasphemia. Go. There he goes. Come out. Blasphemia. Come out right now. There it is. Blasphemia. Go. Go. There he comes. Blasphemia. Cursing and swearing. Come out. You God hater. Come out of there. Go right now. There he is. Keep coughing. There. He, oh, good. Come out, Satan. Satan, lose your hold. Come out of her. Out. 
Out! Come out, you stinking snake. You cursing snake. Bitterness. Blasphemy. Out! Come out of her tongue right now. Come out of that tongue right now. Come out. Come out of her tongue. Come out of her tongue. Go. Come out, you snake. Egypt, come out. There he comes. Come on out. Get out of that body right now. You can't have her anymore. It's over. Come out. Come out. Come out of her. Come out. There he comes. There he comes. Thank you, Jesus. Go out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I forgive my brother and I pray for him. I forgive him, my brother, and I release him. Out. Out. I release my brother. Out. Go. Every man who ever hurt me, I let all of them go. Every single one of them. I forgive them. And I ask you to forgive them. Lord. Every demon from Egypt. Get out. Go now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Out. Every demon from Egypt. Come on. Come on. Go. There he comes. Glory to Good. There they come. Glory. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out right now. Come out right now. Go. Go. Get out of there. Next one out. Next snake out. Get, I told you, next snake out. Let's go. I said, come out. Come out of her. Come out. You, there he is. Here he comes. There he comes. Next one, go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Next one out. Next snake out. You don't go dormant. She hurts you. There's the next one. Come out. Let's go. Come on out. Come out, I said. Come out here. Come out of her. You come out of the woman of God. Now let's get going. Come out. Yeah, don't you tell me no. Come out right now. Don't tell me no. I said, come out. Here he comes. There he is. Thank you, Jesus. Next one. Come on. Quickly. Quickly. Next one. There he goes. Come out. Come out. Next one. There it goes. Come out. Next one. Come out. I forgive my sister and I ask you to bless her, Lord. Come out right now. There it comes. Next. Next one. Come out. Ah, there we go. Come out. There he is. Come out. Out of there right now. Stop staying in there. You don't belong in her. Come out right now. Come out. There he comes. Thank you, Jesus. There it goes. Good. Come out. Come out. Get out of there. I want all of them out. Did you hear me? Get out right now. Now, don't you tell me no. Come out right now. There he comes. Come out. Out here. Come out. Come out of her body. Come out of her esophagus. There he comes. Next. Good. Come out. Come on out. Come on out. Right now. Quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You come out of her breast right this second. Come out of both of them. Come out of her breast. Hurry up. Come out of her breast. Get out of there. Out. 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 There he goes. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Come out of there. Thank you. Hey, she speak in tongues? No. Okay. Just pray after me, okay? You pray after me. You pray after me. You repeat after me. Atuba. Korasha. Menoma. Bandoria. Kurabashike. Good. Notice how it started getting better? Okay. 
Now you're not learning how to do it. I'm just trying to jump start it. It's already in there. I'm just trying to get it to come out. Okay. I feel snakes. What? When I pray at home, sometimes I feel like snakes. Uh, snakes? Yeah, that's that's what was coming out. Is there more in there? Check it. You come. There he is. There, it's right there. There's another one in there. Come on out. Come out there. Come out there. Come out. Out. Out here. There it goes. Thank you to you. Out. Come out. Go. What do you advise me when I am at home uh, praying? Well, you're doing fine right now. You do what you're doing right now. Sometimes I, 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 some yeah. strange things happen when I'm praying. I know. Home. They try to stop you. Like, uh, you know, sometimes I vomit. Uh, sometimes I scream. Yeah, those are, that's Egypt's spirits. Got out of that body right now. Come out of there and go. Get out of her brainstem. Right there. Come out of there. And out it goes. Come on. Come on out. Come on. There it comes. Go. The glory. That's glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Next. Next. Go. Come out of her brain right there. Come out of her brain right there. Out here. Come out. Go. Go. Out. There he is. Come on, there you snake. A snake who vomits. Come out. Come out. <laughs> Don't you tell me no. Come out. No. Venom. Venom. Curses. Come out. Curses. Mental illness. Come out. Insanity. Come out. Come out right now. There it comes. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Was you ever beat up or raped when you were young? Were you verbally abused? Child at roof. I was hit from all the members of my family. What do you mean hit? Hitting. Hitting. Oh, are they all hit you? Why? They they have demons also. I see. Was your the whole family was violent? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I I tried suicide. I tried suicide. I tried to kill myself. Oh, you you did. When was that? I was about 13 years old. 13? How old are you now? Yeah. How now? Oh, now. How old now, are you now? Uh, I'm 38. 38? And you try to kill you? You're 13? Yeah. Okay. Ready? Suicide. You come out of that body right now. Suicide. You get out of there quickly and come out of her right now. Suicide. Suicide. Come out. Come on out. Suicide. Come out of there. Come out. Come out. Oh, there it goes. Come out. Thank you, Jesus. Beatings from family members. Come out. Every beating. Every rejection spirit. Every spirit of rejection that got in. There he is. Come out. Come on out. Hurry up. Come on out. Come on out. Go. Rejection. Physical beatings. Go. Out. Every person that hits you. Go. Every spirit that tri yes, you tell you don't say no, you say yes. Come out right now. Every beating you ever took, come out right now. Get out of there. Come out. Go. There it goes. Come out. Every beating, I forgive every family member, every one of them that beat me, slugged me, slapped me, and every spirit that transferred in of fear and rejection, go. Out. Go. Come out of her throat. Out. Out here. Out here. There he goes. Thank you, Jesus. Come out. Demons from my mother and dad, go. Yeah, there it is. Here it comes. 
Demons from my mother and dad come out of me right now. Go and out. Come out of her throat. Mother, go. Mother. There they go. Thank you, Jesus. There you go. Thank you, Jesus. Go. Every demon from my dad. Go. Yeah, don't tell me no. You come out, yes. You're coming out, yes. Go. Come out, yes. There it goes. There it goes. Every spirit from my dad, every spirit from my mom, and my brothers. Every per that. No, don't tell me no. You tell me yes. You say yes. No, devil, I told you to say yes. Come out right now. Get out of that body. Come out. You don't say no. You say yes. Come out now. There it goes. Go. 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 Every spirit from Egypt, every curse word in Arabic. Every curse word. Ah, there it comes. There he is. Every curse word in Arabic in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come on out. Come on out. No, don't you tell me no. You say yes. Spirit, you say yes. I said say yes. Come out now. Come out of there. Arabic curse words. Yes. Go. Go. A floor. A floor. The spirit that says F you all the time. Come yes. out right now. Toward God. Toward God. Come out. The demon that hates Jehovah. Come out yes. right now. Toward God. Go. Come out. The snake. The Egyptian snake. snake. That hates Yahweh. Yes. There it comes. Go. Come. Come on out. Yahweh, hater. Come out. Come out of there, you snake. There he comes. Here he comes. Get out of her mouth. Come out right now. Get out of her tongue right this second. There he comes. Glory to God. Come out. Come on. Get out of there. Come out. Every spirit that curses God, you are bound and come out of my head. Antichrist. Antichrist. Antichrist spirit. You're, that's the next one. Get out of there. Antichrist. Why not? Come out now. Antichrist. Come out. There he comes. Go. Antichrist. Come out. Go. What else? Beast. 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 You got beast in there? Yeah. What other curse words do you hear in your head? Sorry? Curse words. Uh, I, I hear very bad words. What are they? No, it's in Arabic. In Arabic. In Arabic. What is it? What are they? F, F words. F, F words. No. What's in Arabic? What is that? I, I can say it's like very F, bad words. F, what, what's, F, the, F, what's the F word F in Arabic? Word. F word. Like. What uh, is it in Arabic? Like, like uh, what's the word in Arabic? Against the mother and uh, what? Against the mother, like uh, like like F word against the mother of Jesus and uh, oh Mother against Mary Jesus, uh, yeah. against the mother against uh, Jesus mother against uh, against God you know, against uh, God you know, against uh, Jesus. You know, Did they mention Mother Mary? No, no, no. no. It's about insulting, insulting, insulting in Arabic. Yeah. Yeah, but those aren't your words. Those are his words. Yeah, it's, and you don't have to keep them. Yeah. You Arabic pervert. You blasphemer. You Arabic blasphemer. I curse you. Come out of there right now. Come out of there right now. Those are not her words. Those are your words. She renounces your words. She renounces everything about you. There he is. Here he comes. Come out of there. Go now. Go. Out. Come out. No, don't you say no. Come out. No, you don't say no. Come out of there right now. Here he comes. Here he comes. Thank you, Jesus. Go. Out. Arabic cursing. Come out. Right now. There he comes. Get out of there. 
there it goes glory to God go come out go cursing against mother cursing against Jehovah against Jesus against Holy Spirit against Jesus against you you cursed the Holy Spirit you rotten devil the devil cursed the Holy Spirit that did it he's coming out right now that did it Spirit, you cross the line now. You come out of there right now. You curse the Holy Ghost. Come out right now. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Come out of that body right now. Stop resisting, I said. Come out now. You curse the Holy Ghost. You come out. There he comes. Get out of there. The Arabic demon that curses the Holy Ghost, I said, come out. Get out of there, you serpent. Come out, you snake. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Every demon that cursed the Lord Jesus, the Son of God, get out of that body right now, the Son of God. Come out of there. God. Stop resisting. Come out right now. The Son of God. You curse the Son of God. You come out now. Hurry up. Come out of there. No, don't tell me no. Come out right now. I said don't tell me no. Get out of there right now. Go, here he comes. Here he comes. Thank you, Jesus. Come out. Come out right now. You evil spirit. I hate your guts. I hate every demon. I hate every spirit. I hate you. I hate you. And I command you, in Jesus' holy name, to come out of me now, all of you. All of you. Come out. Hurry. Come out of there. Come out of there right now. How you doing? What happened? What happened to you? He's choking you. Huh? He's choking you? Yeah. Now, did you get raped or abused when you was a kid? My, uh... My situation is my main spirit husband. Oh, and who'd you get it from? I did. I did my first cleansing twenty one day dry fast. But then now, I, how'd you get the marine spirit? I was told. What? I was told that I was initiated by my mother. Your mother? What's your mother's and name? Let's see. Uh, Justina Banks. What? Justina Banks. And did she initiated you into what? I don't know. Into the rain. Is your mother still alive? Yes. She is? Okay, close your eyes. Father God. Father God, I want you to hunt her mother down right now and forgive her. Oh, oh. I want you to forgive her for what she done to her daughter. She cursed her. She handed her oh she handed her over to demons. Can you help me with it? She she handed her daughter over to demons. And we forgive her for what she done. She handed her over to a spirit husband. And he's hiding in her stomach and her vagina. And he must come out tonight. Because we forgive her mother and we bless her. We ask you, God, to forgive her and heal her. Now, Marine Spirit, in Jesus' mighty name, come out. Come on out. Come out. Come out of there, you pervert. You masturbator. You lust. You rapist. Come out of that body right now. Go. Come out. Come out right now. Come out of her throat. Come out right now. Come out of that throat. Come on. Come out of her throat. Stop choking her and come out. Go now. Go. Every demon from her mother, come out. Mother, come out of there. Mother, come out. Right now, go. Go. Witchcraft, go. Sorcery, go. Go. Right now, go. Come out right now. Get out of my body right now. Say it. I forgive my mother 
I bless her. And I ask you, Lord, to heal her. And I renounce this water spirit from the kingdom of darkness. And I command him to go now. Come out. Get out of my body. Oops. Get out of my body right now. Come out. Go. Out, I said. Go. Get out of me. Get out of me. Come out quickly. Come out of my feet. Come out of my legs. Come out of my hips. Come out of my womb. Come out of my vagina. Come out of my breast. Come out of my throat. You sex pervert. Come out. Go now. Get out of my brain. There he is. Keep belching. Come out. That's him. Here he comes. Keep belching. Here he comes. Go. Here he comes. Come out of her body right now, I said. Come out of her body right now. Let go of her genitals right this second. Come out of there, I said. Get out. Get out of her body. Come out right now. You speak in tongues. Go. Go now. Good, louder. 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 Sit down. Louder. Hands up. Louder. 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 Come out, every spirit from her mother. Come out, right now. Come out of her stomach. Come out of her arms right now. Come out. Adultery, fornication, sexual perversion. Come out. Spirit husband. Spirit husband. I command you in Jesus' name. Louder. Hey. <clears throat> Just repeat after me. See how easy you do it? Now you this time you follow me, only you add some syllables on your own. Just close your eyes and relax. And any syllable's good, there's no wrong answer, so it can be any syllable. You follow me? Good. Keep going. Stand over by her. Stand over here. Louder. He's trying to stop you. See, he hates that. Good girl. See, he doesn't like that. It aggravates you. Any syllable. Hey, do you speak in tongues? Yeah. You do? Okay, help her. Speak. Good girl. Thank you, Jesus. Love. Are there, that could huh? Are there spirits that could hinder from receiving God's love? Yeah. How about your love for Him? How's that going? Oh, it's good. It's going good? Okay. Those boys. Love you too. Hi. Hi, I'm Lena. I'm the one that has the hearing issue. Oh, you have the hearing issue. When did that start? Um... It started two and a half weeks ago. Now, when you was a kid, did somebody hurt you? What was that? When you was a kid, did somebody hurt you real bad? 
Um, probably all the time. They, they call me Christian for he can beat me up. As a little kid? Yeah. What do you mean talk about bullies in school? Yeah. And then were you ever uh, physically beaten up? No, not really. Were you ever sexually abused as a kid? No, not that I remember. Well, were you? I was told that my dad did, but I was so young I don't remember it. If he did or not, I don't know. Did he ever do it to anybody else? Not that I know of, no. And are you married? Yes. How many times? Um, it's my third marriage. It's your third marriage? Third marriage. Were the other two husbands verbally abusive? Oh, yeah. Did they physically abuse you? No, um, no, but I got handcuffed once and raped by him. And then this thing started when? About two weeks ago. Where were you when it happened? Um, in the kitchen, and I was just putting away my earplugs because I had my earplugs and listening to music. What kind of music? Unfortunately, it wasn't Christian. What kind was it? It was um, like Leaves Eyes. I don't know what? if you heard of it. Leaves Eyes. It's What's kinda, that? Um, they do more like... Um, uh, I wish I could explain it. It's more like a Norris, Norris men music. Um, uh, listen, uh, here's our problem. That's what? Here's the problem. The spirits you had before that when you were younger from the husbands yeah. let in this one uh, you already had spirits I know I have a sleep Lots paralysis of and sleep stuff. paralysis right yeah, yeah. and then they let these in two weeks ago so we got to start here first okay hey this girl had this was your name Lena Lena she had two abusive husbands is this third husband abusive Oh, no. Is this the best husband of three, the current one? He's the best, yeah. He's okay. The best and then guy. the other two were verbally abusive? Yeah. And they did they curse you? Well, the first one really did. And yeah. then the second one handcuffed you? No, he, was hit, he, he was supposed to be Christian and he ended up being a liar. <laughs> no, I know that, but I mean, did he handcuff you? Yes, the okay. first one did. He handcuffed okay. me and raped me. All right, now just, uh, just relax, okay? Just take a big breath and relax. She's got a husband problems and fear demons and all kinds of stuff. Okay. And then this thing here got in later. That's not the main problem. Okay. The main problem is the husband. Okay. Okay. How you doing? Good. Good to see you again. You too. We're talking about kids. Kids, oh. Mia fasted and led a prayer meeting last night. She did, you're kidding. No, not. She had a